Hello, I am Jessica Belaver. Oi, eu sou Priscila Prestes. And in our session today, uh, we are going to talk about two teachers in one, creating fun and easy videos to target specific language structure. So, as I said, I am Jessica Belaver. I teach first grade Portuguese in Bluffdale Elementary, Jordan District in Utah. I'm also from Utah. My name is Priscilla Prestes. I'm also a first grade Portuguese uh, dual immersion teacher in Rocky Mountain Elementary in Alpine District, Utah. Utah have a large program in dual immersion, dual language immersion, which means we teach our students in a 50-50% model when half of the day they spend with us learning content through language. So in our case, first grade, we teach math and science, social studies in Portuguese, so and just speak Portuguese in class. And that's how is our model and how we teach language. So we have a research problem here. Portuguese DLI, a dual language immersion, is in is its eighth year in Utah, the Portuguese program. We have a lot of languages, but for Portuguese, several PDs offer by the Portuguese program, we have been discussing some um, fossilized errors, mainly in terms of verb conjugation, that our students are coming to eighth grade still with these fossilizing errors. And also, students receive little exposure to the first person verb forms in Portuguese, because usually students will listen to the teacher asking questions, asking questions, asking questions, but not much answering the questions and then this verb conjugation problems happens. Yeah, so our main goal with our session is to show you, to present you how we uh, create videos to increase the amount of input in, ver in the first person verb conjugation that the students receive every day in the classroom. So they will, uh, with this strategy, the students will be more exposed to the first and second verb conjugation forms and uh, they will start to listen more to this uh, other form and kind of learn and be more familiar with it uh, and also this strategy helps the students to become more familiar and get ready for the future online tests that they have to take using the computer where they have to interact with the computer with a person uh, in front of them uh, for example, the Apple test that they have to take in third and fifth and sixth grade here in, in Utah. So it's another um, strategy. strategy that we can help them get ready for this. So in our on-person presentation that we did, we, we taught Photoboot, QuickTime Player, Adobe Spark, and Cheddar Pix Kids some tools to help the, with those videos. Because of our time length, we will focus on Photobooth today. Uh, it is the tool that we use to create our fun videos to our students, and I hope you will enjoy as much as we do. So let's see how it works. So we have two scenarios that we want to present to you, how it works in a real classroom, like face-to-face -face with your students, and you how you can do it in this online learning situation that we are facing now. So here you can see a screenshot of Priscilla, this one here. She uh, uses this persona in her classroom, Professora Olho Grande, so she uses this effect. And here it's me in my classroom. I use the Bochecha, Professora Bochecha, uh, to kind of make it more interesting and more fun for the kids in the classroom, or of course in the online learning too. Stick with us because we will teach you later how to use those effects too. But first, so we have a guest in our session, in our presentation here. So let's see what she has to say to us. Oi, professora. Oi. Tudo bem? Tudo bem, e você? Ah, eu vou bem também. Professora, qual é seu nome? Meu nome é professora Bela Ver, e você? Ah. Que legal! O meu nome é professora Bochecha. Bochecha. <risos> então, professora, hoje eu vou fazer 
três perguntas para você, tá bom? Três perguntas. E você tem que responder com a frase completa, frase grande, ok? Ok, vamos lá. Muito bem, então vamos lá. Primeira pergunta, professora. Você gosta de banana? Hum, sim, eu gosto de banana. Muito bom, professora. Você gosta de laranja? Hum, não, eu não gosto de laranja. E a última pergunta número 3. Você gosta de maçã? Sim, eu gosto de maçã. Muito bem, professora. Você foi muito, muito bem, tá bom? Tá bom. Agora eu tenho que ir para casa. Até a próxima. Tchau, tchau. Tchau, tchau, professora. <risos> Muito bem, então esse é um exemplo. Uh. Oops, Portuguese! So this was an example of how to do it in a online format, like online learning. So let's see here. Um, did you notice? Have you noticed any pattern in this dialogue? Yes. So when you make a question in Portuguese, in the present tense, you say você gosta with the letter A. Do you like in Portuguese? So você gosta. And when you answer, you have to change the A for the letter O. So yes, I like. Sim, eu gosto. So this is the pattern that I wanted my students to focus, to pay attention. A and O, how it changes. So I have to make lots of lots of questions with the same uh, structure for them to notice the pattern. And it's very um, important to focus in one grammar pattern at once, not kind of do, a, do lots, lots of patterns so they, they get confused and they don't know what you are trying to focus on. So according to the counterbalance uh, method, from Roy Lister, this is the first step of the method, the noticing step. So in the counterbalance instructions, gives language and content of objectives equal and complemented status. So status, what you are doing? We are teaching uh, fruits vocabulary, yes, but we are, we are teaching the life uh, cycle of the plants. And then we are using the structure to teach science and balance academic content and language. You, um, you see this pattern in other things that we are doing. We are using these videos to show um, language, but we are teaching language through content. And that's why you call counterbalance instruction. Very important for us in dual language immersion. Yes, so this counterbalance approach has four phases, four stages, according to Roy Lister. The first one is the noticing. Uh, the noticing stage is like a context, context an activity, as this one with the video, where the students have to notice, try to notice by themselves uh, a pattern, but the teacher doesn't say anything explicitly. They, he, she or he just highlights the pattern, the structure that he wants to um, the students to learn to kind of introduce the topic. After the noticing activity, you go to the awareness part, the awareness activity or awareness stage, where you you more you do with the students um, kind of a guided activity where you you specifically you say the pattern and you have the students notice this pattern uh, in different sentences in different um, uh, situations and uh, for the students to become more aware what, what what the structure is. And after this awareness activity, we go to the guided practice where the students will practice but with the guidance of the teacher. So the teacher is still there in the scenario. He is still helping, providing sentence frames, providing uh, answers for the students to help them 
create their answers, uh, but they are practicing the pattern that they have just learned. So for example, in this case, the teacher would be, uh, the students would be interacting with the video and the teacher would be at the side, just helping the students to answer. And the last one would be a more open activity, a communicative practice where the students would work in pairs with another students, trying to put in practice the pattern that they have just learned. And the teacher would all only walk around the classroom and help students that have some that are struggling more. Uh, but it is more open. They don't have they don't have like a sentence frame or any kind of uh, guidance very uh, like a visual guidance there. They have to try to be, to use what they have, what they just learned by themselves. So Jessica and I, we started using these strategies like two years ago mm -hmm. and we noticed a huge difference in how the language comes to students and they are more aware of the structures and really make a difference for us. So you can see examples of Jessica working in her classroom. And here she's talking to herself, like the <laughs> other teacher, but it's herself. And just just answering and, and, and asking questions. And later she is talking to the students if they notice any patterns, patterns, what are the patterns, and they are discussing it. And then we have a guiding practice here when they are speaking to the teacher. And the, if you can see, this is uh, one of my videos because we share videos and they have more teachers coming to our classes, more fun videos and have the experience both teachers. So they are seeing the pattern, they are talking to the teacher and they, then we have communicative practice when they are using the structures they just learned to communicate with the pairs and the magic happens. <laughs> So now we will have and we'll show you a classroom examples and using a math content. Uh, and when the first the teacher will be speaking and then the students will have some practice. Minha professora, olho grande. Oi, professora. Oi, professora, olho grande. Tudo bem? Professora, vamos brincar de eu tenho? Vamos, vamos, vamos. Vamos lá. Hoje eu tenho sete. Eu tenho cinco. Eu tenho mar. Lá, 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 lá. Eu tenho We are making a game. That I have this number, I have this number, I have more, I have less. Eu tenho Eu tenho mais. Eu tenho menos. I'm losing everything. <laughs> Eu tenho dois. Eu tenho. I have two. I have Eu one. Tenho Eu tenho menos. I, I wish you can see the students Eu paying attention. Tenho. It's amazing. And now they are practicing. There is a blurry to protect them. Now they have the numbers and they are practicing. I have. This is a little chaos you like to listen in your classroom, huh? <laughs> <laughs> so this example here that we watched with Priscilla was uh, a practice inside the classroom. And the one that I did before with the, the screencast here is one idea, one strategy that you can use now during this online learning period that we are living. So we have these both ideas that you can implement in your uh, classroom into your lessons right now. So let's focus on the photo booth tutorial. That's the one, that's the program that we use to create our videos that you just watched. And then uh, later we can provide the links uh, with the other programs and apps that we use. Uh, so with photo booth, you have to 
be aware of these um, actions here. So you have to manage the time of uh, making the questions and answering the questions to yourself. You have to look to the right side. So this is very common because when you we make a video, we usually uh, you make your you have a video like looking to the right side, but then in your classroom you have to stay in the left side. So you have to kind of practice this first, the position where you are going to look and where you are going to be in your classroom or here in in screencast when you are doing online learning. You can use the effects and different voices. Kids love this and I think adults too. Mm -hmm. It make it uh, it makes um, more fun, uh, turns your lesson in a more relaxed lesson. So you are not so worried about patterns. It, it, sometimes you don't even notice that you are learning grammar and you are learning grammar. So be happy and creative. So your voice, your expression, you can modify, you can use a lot of this in the video and another suggestion maybe if you don't want to be in the video you can use puppets and just uh -huh, use your hand with a funny puppet and pretend that you are uh the puppet in the video okay great, great tip to the introverts yeah <laughs> so if you don't want to show your face because i i'm okay with showing my face but with the effect so the effect sometimes make me makes me feel more comfortable of showing my face uh -huh. and making jokes and everything but if you are not comfortable with the effects you can use a puppet okay so now let's see the photo booth tutorial stick with us if something happened with our camera but i hope you can see it so photo booth photo booth is free if you have a mac computer so you just go to uh download Sometimes they are already on Launchpad. If you don't have a Mac computer, I'm sorry, there's no way you can use this one, Photobooth, and I will give you some options later. So you open Photobooth, uh, usually in Launchpad you can see what it is. And when you open your Photobooth, you need to go to here. So you have the, this is just to take a picture, and you need to video video option right here and then we will choose the effect so we have a lot I have to take you off yeah <laughs> see how many effects you can use you can normal there is the normal option too but that's the one that Jessica use chipmunk chipmunk <laughs> <laughs> you have the bochecha and I always use the bug out because I call professora big eyes like Professor Olho Grande. Okay, now you will record. Okay, remember, think about your questions. You need to look. You need to have time to answer in your mind. So, Oi, tudo bem? Qual seu nome? So give it in your mind, answer in your mind. Uh, how old are you? I am 36. Uh, what's your favorite color? So see, when you are ready with the questioning, just stop the video and we will automatically save, like you can see here. Oi, tudo bem? Qual seu nome? So give it in your mind, answer in your mind. Okay, that's the video. So then you will uh, save your video and use whatever you want. Like like Jessica did today, she put in this, the side of the slideshow and the screencast and you have to pay attention. Where is our head? Where is the video? So things that you need to be aware, of, but have fun, you will love it. So if you don't have photo booth, if you don't have photo booth and you still want effects, the other only way I know is using your cell phone and the apps we use for social media like Instagram, Snapchat, TikTok, uh, it have effects, effects in it and you can record and save instead of publish in the media and use the videos for yourself. Um, if you don't mind about effects but you still want to record your face, 
um, talk to yourself. You can use QuickTime Player, and we have a tutorial in the end of this presentation, and record talking to yourself, adding to your slide, and do the same way Jessica showed in the beginning of the presentation. And you can use two other things too. Another app or program that we like a lot is Adobe Spark. I'm sure many of you are already familiar with Adobe Spark. Um, this tool makes it fast and easy to create social graphics, web pages, and video stories anywhere for free. So what is nice about it and different from the other video tools is that this one um, make, makes your content looks and sounds more professional than QuickTime Player or than just using your camera in your iPad or cell phone. And also the good thing about it is that it turns your uh, slides, your presentation into a video and you can record your voice on the top of your slides and at the end it will like generate a um, link and then this link you can share with your students and they will be able to click and open and see your slides just like they were a video with your narration at in the background if you want so it's very cool the layout they have like very fancy and sophisticated layouts already done you just click and choose the ones that you like so you don't have to waste time thinking about all these layout things and styles and everything um so far the lower grades it's uh, I'm talking about like kindergarten, first and second grade. Uh, maybe it's more um, useful for the teachers to create content and share with the parents and with their students. But for upper grades, uh, it's very nice for the students to create content because this is the most important and interesting thing about technology and videos is when the students are able to create their own videos material and really um, post in a blog in a classroom blog or something like that to share the content that they have created so adobe spark is very nice very useful for and for languages it's wonderful because this thing of recording your voice they have the written form of the language they have the speaking the sound so it's very useful for learning easy to add images, it's online, it's free, easy to share, so great for, for students too. Yes, perfect. But how can our lower graders create content using technology? So it's very hard to find easy, uh, not complicated technology apps or programs that kids with seven or six year olds that they can create with technology. And Shatter Peaks Kids is a very resourceful one very useful one priscilla and i we have used it a lot in our classes with our first graders and they love to use this app it's um we don't you don't need to have a login a password you just download the app into your ipad or cell phone and start using it uh, priscilla will show now how uh, like a small tutorial about shutter Peaks kids and you can see how it works so I record my cell phone screen and um, you can download to your cell phone or iPads or tablets. You just open the app and give to your students. If you, I ask my technology guide to install in all iPads in my classroom, so they have easy access to it. And I will, they will take a picture of an object or a stuffed animal, whatever you have in class, and they will draw a mouth. A mouth and then they have 30 seconds to talk about the object like hi i'm an orange i'm round i'm a fruit whatever they have with language like portuguese eu sou uma laranja and use what they learn know for the language and then they can add, they can add stickers they can add uh, frames and they can write and, and that's it you can export to the camera roll to share with, with another students to, to say for yourself to send to parents whatever you think is important to you this is a final product example i am a orange i am actually yellow and i'm round so they can usually do this with the vocabulary they have like we are first grade teachers and we have our students who never speak portuguese with us 
doing these videos and create a language with this app because I think it's funny. It's like a miracle for us. Yes. Even the shy ones, the very shy ones, they like to to use the app and make the... They have so much fun using the app for science, for math. It's very interesting that you can use, for example, when you are teaching about the shapes, 3D shapes, 2D, 2D, 2D shapes, you can have your students walk around the classroom, find the shape, take a picture and say the characteristics of the shape uh, recording the voice or rocks for example in science we have to study rocks so they can have a school tour walk around the school find some rocks take pictures and create their character and practice all this language structure that we always want them to practice so it's very resourceful this tool okay so think for the tools we talk about which tool we will try first and how do you plan to implement it, it even in online uh, school or in the classroom? Yeah, so there are many options for you. We, we love all of them. We think each one has its value and importance. Uh, so write down some ideas right now so you won't forget later what you want to try to implement and start doing the next school year. So you can have access to all the tutorials and uh, going to this um, link or with the QR code will, uh, and also has our emails in the paper. Yes. So just if you have any questions that are not in the tutorials, just feel free to contact us. We have our emails inside the link. And yeah, just reach out if you, if you think we can help you out some some in some way we are available to help you thank you for having us thank you obrigada muito obrigada